What's up, Gemini? It's your boy, Gem Mint. We're here with another Omnibus haul, so stay tuned. Alright guys, before we get started, make sure you go ahead and grab that subscribe button down below and hit the notification bell so you're made aware every time we release new videos. We have not done an Omnibus haul in a while, man. It feels like it's been a few weeks. This is two hauls. I wanted to get enough books together to uh, make it worthwhile. Let's jump right into it. The first book is The Transformers, The World in Your Eyes, Deluxe Edition, Volume 1. Um, it, I got this because I thought it was going to be more in vain of like the Phase 1 and Phase 2 IDW books. And I understand it's the first 12 issues of like the ongoing series, but I don't know. It kind of doesn't feel like the other deluxe editions. But I mean, it has a ribbon in it. It's um, the modern run. I figured I'd give it a shot. $50 cover price. Let's take a look at the artwork. All right, so I don't know why I was disappointed with the construction of the book. I guess maybe because it, I don't know, it has like a weird kind of plasticky feel. I don't know. Transformers, The World in Your Eyes, Volume 1. That doesn't mean that the content isn't good, so I don't know why I'm literally judging a book by its cover but <laughs> here's the front spine and the back let's take a look at the artwork here kind of has your typical idw transformers art nice little shot of megatron here looks pretty clean it's a pretty dope optimus cover got the ribbon here for the built-in bookmark you gotta love that some optimus megatron panels so it looks decent enough. It looks like more of the same. I still got to read phase two, I think, before I even jump into this. Although I hear it's not required reading. But still. Pretty cool. All right, next up, another IDW book. This is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Volume 10, the Deluxe Edition. This also has a $50 cover price. And like I expressed before... Not really digging the fact that it's mostly miniseries and tie-ins. This collects Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Universe 19 and 20. Uh, issues 73 through 75 of the main series. The Dimension X miniseries. And the Ghostbusters TMNT 2 crossover. It does look good on the shelf with the rest of the books. But uh, I really want to get closer to like being up to date with this run. But I love the cover with Krang on it. Let's flip through and take a look at the artwork. All right, yeah, you got to love that cover with that pink, that spine, Krang with his body. My body. The spine right here with the weaponized kind of wraps. The back has another shot of Krang, what it collects, the price here. These are always well constructed. Uh, well constructed. They have a uh, table of contents. TMNT Universe stuff. Which usually kind of ties in with the with the main story, some way, shape, or form. Got the turtles with Fugitoid. I'm caught up on reading the deluxe editions though, so I should probably just knock this out real quick and drop a review on them. Yeah, I just want more of the main story, man. I hear that the next volumes will be more main story. I don't know where I heard that from or how accurate it is. Uh, oh, nice, got a little purple ribbon. Purple Ribbon All-Stars, I be on it all day, straight up. 10 points if you know what song that's from. Next up, we got Conan the Barbarian, the original Marvel Years, Volume 3 Omnibus with a direct market edition cover. Another Conan book to add to the collection here. We uh, recently were solicited Volume 4 and have a sneak tease on Volume 5. So Marvel is cranking out the Conan content. This one had a $125 cover price, collects Conan the Barbarian 52 through 83, annuals 2 and 3, giant size 5, power records 31, and foom 14. I'm not a huge Conan fan, but I got to add it to the archive, so let's take a look at some old school Conan. All right, Conan the Barbarian. So I'm digging the cover. I always like getting these old school covers on these omnibus. This is like Bronze Age material, Roy Thomas, John Buscema, Howard uh chicken am i saying that right probably not got all the covers on the back there for you conan fans inside of the dust jacket here so at least these books all these conan books are all they all match even the uh conan the barbarian and the savage sword of conan so they all look good on the shelf to the get together they're all uniform 
All the hardcovers match like this. I think Marvel has a good ear for what we want as collected edition collectors. So we appreciate that. Although, I don't know who asked for so many volumes of Conan, but, you know, they got the rights back from Dark Horse and they started cranking that material, you know, so can't be mad at them for that. So here's the interiors of Conan. Like I said, you have Bronze Age artwork. Not really what I grew up on, so sorry I'm not too excited about it, but some of these books I can just collect for the library. It's there if I ever get around to it, but, um... Like I said, not, not my favorite stuff. All right, next up we have the Anomaly of an Omnibus, the Batman Black and White, which was released months ago on Amazon. Just was uh, available through in-stock trades and other online sites. So we picked it up uh, at a better price than Amazon and way better shipping. But it looks cool. It's got this matte dust jacket. It has graphics on the front. Uh, kind of reminds me of the Batman by Grant Morrison Omnibus with the black and white and the construction. Let's flip through and take a look at it. It collects um, it collects a ton of series from the two volumes of the Batman Black and White and the Batman Gotham Knights. $125 cover price on it. Let's take a look. And then you got the Batman Black and White. So you got a lot of uh, big names on this. Bermejo, Alex Ross. You have Jim Lee. Here's the spine. It looks really similar to the Batman by uh, Snyder and Capullo as well. So here's the back that shows all the uh, artists and everything. You got Darwin Cook, Michael Allred. It's funny to see him do black and white because he's usually so colorful. You got Neil Adams, Mobius. That's tight. So cover price and uh, the issues are on the back. The issues are on the inside. Here's the interior. Pretty clean. Like I said, it's like a matte kind of finish on this dust jacket. That's a Jim Lee cover too. A little artsy kind of deco vibe gotta stretch that spine out so the only thing I know about black and white are the little statues that they made and I think they even have those in the back here all the, all the black and white statues how many do they show because there's a ton of them Mike, Mign Mike Mignola statue. So yeah, I guess there was a, a four-issue series of Batman Black and White. Then they made more of an ongoing. Then they had this Batman Gotham Knights stuff that was all in the same kind of vein. So a slew of uh, little stories, different artists doing Black and White Batman stuff. Was a Batman omnibus had to add it to the collection. And we saved the cream of the crop for last. The Incredible Hulk Omnibus by Peter David, Volume 1. There has been confirmed. Volume 2 is coming. This is the Grey Hulk stuff. This is Joe Fix-It. This is Todd McFarlane covers. This is the direct market variant with a recolored Todd McFarlane cover. I wasn't sure how they were going to release it. A lot of people not digging the recoloring. I personally think it's cool. They modernized it a little bit for this dust jacket instead of having that flat type of look as it originally had. Uh, looks like a dope book. I really love the wraparound cover on this. Another McFarlane uh, spread here. I think I've only read Hulk 340 out of this book, so I really want to jump into this soon. I got to finish reading this um, X-Men Omnibus Volume 2. I have to read Gotham Central because I did a video with a poll for you guys. And then we'll probably jump into this, which collects uh, issues 328 and then 331 through 368 of Incredible Hulk. Then Web of Spider-Man 44, Fantastic Four 320, uh, Marvel Comics Presents 26 and 45. Let's flip through and take a look at Incredible Hulk by Peter David. All right, for the last book of the haul. So yeah, I mean, I, I really like this cover better than the regular cover. So I thought the orange background looked good. I like the colors. I thought they popped more. So I'm glad I went with this one. And you have a similar image on the spine. Covers on the back. You get a lot of Todd McFarlane covers here. The classic 340 with the Wolverine cover. The interior of the dust jacket here. Kind of like an ASM 300 swipe on that cover. And we get the Todd McFarlane wraparound. So very cool. 
I was never really a fan of the way McFarlane did his eyebrows, though. They always look like some kind of brontosaurus or something. I don't know. Look weird. All right, so get a table of contents here. What happened prior to the run? Looks like with Gray Hulk coming back. I think he comes back in like 328. And I think it's the first time he's gray since the uh, Incredible Hulk issue number one. Where he was only gray due to like printing issues. Looks like you got some X-Men cameos here. McFarlane stuff. This is 340. Leader. This is definitely like my vibe of comics. Like late 80s, early 90s. Spider's probably the web of Spider-Man issue. Oh, that's the thing. What is that from? I feel like that's from... Uh, Damn, I wanted to say 2099, but that's not it. I guess he gets deformed. Looks cool. There goes the Joe Fix It. All right, so that's going to wrap up the Omnibus Hall. Thank you guys for checking it out. Make sure you drop a like before you leave and comment below what your favorite book of the hall is. We're currently doing a 50,000 subscriber giveaway, so check out the video above uh, to enter for a chance to win the XM Studio Spider-Man statue. So make sure to check that video out. Make sure you subscribe here. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss a video. And stay minty fresh. Peace.